السلام عليكم فرانس ويلكم باك تو شانل ان ذيس فيديو يو ار جوينغ تو ليرن اباوت بارامترايز تيست ليتس جيت ستارتد سو فيرست واي وي نيد بارامترايز تيست يوزلي وي رايت تيست فور اور فانكشنز اند يو وونت تو تشيك ملتيبل انبوتس فور ذوز فانكشن وي وونت تو تشيك هاو اور اوبجيكتس فانكشن بيهيف تو ديفرنت انبوتس رايت maybe you are testing a numeric function or other function you want to check it for different versions maybe if you are taking string as argument you want to check what would happen if you pass for example empty string or for example really big string and if you want to test that you can you can maybe write several tests for that but you can do something else which is parameterized test in which you write the test once and then feed it with multiple parameters the parameters will be both the input and also the expected result so let's see example so let's pretend here that we do have this function called palindrome this will check if an input is palindrome or not which means it will check if the input is equal to the reversed value of it right so if you take an example like for example this one if you check the palindrome of for example a radar all right this should return us true exactly it is working true if i add simple r it won't work because this is not palindrome all right now if i want to check this function if i want to write unit test for this function i could do the following i can start by writing some tests like that i'm using junit5 for this example and here you can see i'm passing the function well i can here in line maybe this one or since i'm using true i can for example do assert true okay both would work but here for the purpose of parameterized test we are going to use normal version which is equal now if i want to test multiple cases i have either to duplicate this one and I can provide different values here, for example. I can provide the true is not palindrome. I can provide also a number like that. This is palindrome, for example. This one is not. Or I can maybe create two separate tests, testing maybe the true versions and also the false versions. But you can do something much better here, which is to use parameterized tests. Now, in order to use parameterized tests, you need to add the dependency. I'm using the dependency here of JUnit5, right? You can add this also in Gradle. And here you have to delete this one, right? and do parameterize test, this one, instead of tests. And then we need to think our input value, like the changing values as parameters. So here I can maybe put the input value, which will be a string, and the expected result would be a Boolean. So I can do expected result as Boolean. And then I can change this value and put it here, and also this value and put it here, right? I can delete all of that now. And here we need to think from where we are going to get our value. And the first way to do that, which is called CSV source. There is value source, I will show it to you in a minute. But the first one, which is CSV source, okay? Now here you need to provide your values as comma separated values. So here are the var add values. So the first one, I'm thinking about providing the input value in our case, which is, for example, radar and comma. And what is the expected value, which is true? Now, if I run this test, like always try to run it, it will execute only one time and it will show me the following. It is running for radar true. I can provide different value like the following. I can provide the second value, which may be false. For example, let's, pro let's provide the following second and this should be false. And the third one, which is one, two, three, two, one. And this should be true. And then if you run it, we should expect this test to run like it will run three tests for us. And all of them are working fine. If I change only, for example, I don't know, let's change this to true. It shouldn't work. Exactly, it should work. And one thing, one nice thing you can see, which is it is translating this true to be a Boolean by itself. I'm going to see later in this video how you can convert your values to specific types, especially when it's coming from CSV sources. Okay, let me put it back here. Awesome. Now you can test also simple values. Let's say you want to provide only values, for example, as strings, for example. You can do something else. Let me just write another test. For example, when case is true, so we don't have to provide the second value. I need only to provide one value. And here I'm checking only for the true ones. So the expected value, we won't have it. And then what I can do, I can write parameterized test, as you can see, and I can put value source. Here in the value source, you can provide simple things like short array, byte array, int array, long array, for example, and also string array. So I can provide it like following. I can do strings. And here I can provide my string. As you can see, I'm providing only for the true ones. So I'm expecting, for example, there is radar, for example. Uh, there is one, two, three, two, one, for example. You can have also, for example, civic, for example. And if I run this test, I will get, like, as you can see, it's simple value and everything should pass. 
okay later i will tell you also how you can customize this thing which is the test names okay other than value sources there is other way you can do the test which is method source in which you create a method that returns the values for you but first let's pretend we do have another function we want to test which is for example calculating rectangle area i know the example are pretty simple just for the sake of demonstrating parameterized test here we will expect two parameters the width and the height and also the expected result so we can do the following we can create another test of course it will be parameterized test and here we are going to provide something called a method source here the method source you need to provide the name as a string so the name of our string called for example rectangle test data we need to create a function like the following and of course here we can run it and here we should give it the different values here we'll have the width the height and also the expected value so here we have we do have the test here are the results we are expecting and also the width and the height now we need a way to provide this thing so here we need to create a method with this exact name rectangle test data so we need to create it so it is statically accessed okay so we need to create it into something called companion object and here we need to create a function called exact with this name which is rectangle test data here you have the option you can either create a class that wrap all of these values because you can't return three things from function of course but you can do the following you can create an array of data it will return us an array because you are going to return multiple things and this array will be an array of three things that are in okay now we can return the following let's create an array of this would be a generic array and then for each one for each instance of the test you are going to create an array so for example we can pass the value 3.0 and 2.0 for example and expect the, retail, the result to be 6 then for the second test we can pass another thing for example we can pass maybe 4 and for example 5 and this should be 20 and this is enough for testing now there is a problem this function won't work because as i said it need to be statically accessed so we need to add jvm static here now if you run this test are going to see the following exactly it is running as expected if i add only one simple thing that isn't fine it won't work okay so here exactly it's not working always try to see if your test isn't working so that you know that you are testing the right thing. now there are other ways you can specify the sources there is something called enum source for example if you want to pass enums right you can specify the class of the enums and then it will pass for you this is a great thing so enum source are fine and there are also another good way which is as we already talked about csv there is something called csv file okay so we can specify complete custom csv file i will show you in one project i'm using for core refactoring legacy code this will be published on the channel for the paying members only sorry so here it will be csv file source so you can specify a lot of things you can specify the file you can specify the file land separator also i forget to mention that this csv source has many parameters if you do something called fill function if you do control p are going to see many things first you can see for example the values you can see something called delimiter string because usually in csv it doesn't have to be comma separated value sometimes it's separated for example by this thing okay if we do this thing i don't think it will work so this is a semicolon and it shouldn't work if you run this test right now are going to get an exception we are going to get another prop prediction violation exception okay we couldn't uh, use this one so you can do the following you can do the limiter string either you can use it string or as a char you can use it as a char and here it will be the semicolon now if you run this test it should pass normally so you can have exactly it is working so as i said you can have a lot of customization using this csv source there are many other parameters you can specify okay you can specify null values you can for example ignore leading and trailing white spaces for example both at the end of sort you can include some char per columns and many other stuff now here is an example for the prayer time test which is the playlist we are going to include for refactoring the legacy code so the first thing we need to do for refactoring the legacy code is to write test okay and since this class has many many parameters for example the time format calculation method the time zone longitude and latitude for example many parameters here we are doing this with parameters but we are using parameterized tests with csv file source okay we are skipping the first line because here if you check this csv file that this is a good thing because I used chat GPT in order to generate this for me, right? Which is a good thing to use artificial intelligence to fill out some test data. So the first column is for the column titles. 
it's the header file. So here we need to specify that you need to skip the first one and simply you can pass the parameters. Now for some parameters, it is pretty simple. Other parameters have some problem because I want to convert this date, you can see this date. I want to convert this thing into a date object, right? We use something called convert with. This annotation allows you to create a converter that will convert some string into some custom type. So here is how it works. We simply extend from simple argument converter. You will get the source. We need to check if the source is string. Then from that source, I'm going to return any. We use it as any as you can see here because you are returning an any. And then inside the framework, it will convert that any into a date because you are declaring it here as a date object. Okay, so here is the simple thing. You can get string. After getting that string, we are simply choosing simple date format and converting. Another parameter I did also, which is the expected result. Here is the expected result. But the problem is that this expected result has many values. So I'm passing this as a list. So I'm converting this string into a list. For that reason, I'm using another converter called array convert. Okay, so here it will check if that thing is a string. Simply, I'm splitting it based on this delimiter because I included the comma here as part of the result. So you can see. So JUnit5 has a great framework to do parameterized tests. As you can see, as you can see, we are using converters, are using converters and also some custom type that let our testing life much easier. Okay, let's go back to the previous project. Here in this project, as I said, I want also to include specific name for the tests. You can do it like the following. Here in, here in the annotation, there is parameter called name. The name here is a string, so you need to provide a name. You can get two main things here. You can get something called the index, you need to provide it like the following with curly brackets. This index will be the number of the test. For example, for the first test, it will be one. For the second test, it will be, it will be two, and so on. So you can include it in the name. For example, you can call it testing, for example, one. You can give it two columns. And then if you want to get the values here, you can use something like that, but only to include the number. So if I'm using the number zero, I'm talking about the first one. For example, you can use input like that, and you can include something like the following, I don't know, for the result of the second one, because here it would be zero and then one. And then if you run this test, for example, we will get different values for the test. So here you can see the following. The test has much better name. Testing one, for example, input is radar and result is true. So these names are much readable. So you can provide good readability for your test. With that thing, we are covering pretty much all the things you need to know about parameterized tests. As you can see, it makes our life much, much easier in order to include one instance of different values for the test, which is a great thing. We can see the flexibility of the value sources, CSV sources, method source, for example, even in up sources, right? Which is a really good thing. And since we are using Kotlin, we can tweak it as the way we want. For example, as I said here in the beginning, for, for example, for the previous tests, I used complete custom object here, and then I provide the custom object here instead of arrays, okay? We have also this in JNet4, but it's not as sophisticated as this one. There is a great tutorial by Test with Spring in which they demonstrate the JNet4, but I will show only the different things. So here they are testing simple some function for calculator. The first thing we need to do is to include a runner, which is run with parameters. This need to come from a runner. This is for JNet4. And then we need to create kind of a similar function to provide the value, which is method source. So here we create it as collection. You can create it as a list, I think. And you provide different values for your object, the first value and second value and the result, as they are doing here. And then you simply need to call it. And then you need to define these things as members for your class, because this is what you are expecting. And then you need to create a constructor with these parameters. So here is the thing. You need to create a constructor with the same name, of course, it's constructor. And then you need to provide the different values and how you set up. Now, what will happen is that using that runner, it will create an instance of that class and pass the different value of that test. That's why we need this one to be static. Okay? And you need to annotate it with parameters, of course. And then we will have our normal function as test. And we don't have to provide any parameters because we are in JUnit4, for example. And that's exactly the thing. It's a little bit limited. And unfortunately, we need to use this one when working in Android. Because in Android, I'm talking about instrumented tests. In the normal test, local test, you can use JUnit5. But for instrumented tests, you have to use JUnit4. We use it a lot when working, for example, with screenshot testing. Sometimes for screenshot testing, we test components and we provide different values for these components. Okay, for example, we are testing this component with dark theme enabled and disabled, for example. 
You can test it also with different, for example, it depends on the components, especially if you are using Jetpack Compose because we are refactoring our components and we need to isolate its testing. So it is great way, but we still use JUnit4 for that. It's fine, you need to create just a method that describes the different values and the expected result. And then you need to create a constructor. Usually in Kotlin, we create the constructor directly with the class name. You provide the different values, which are the members for your class. And then you can access this members for a class directly here in your test. It's a little bit slow compared to JUnit5, but it is fine, it's worked fine. So this is the concept of parameterized test. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and always see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.